diet. And I wanted to get across to you mainly today that there are a lot of deviators who have left the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and they've made it their sworn duty to try and lead all of us away from the path that leads to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Allah's last and greatest messenger, who is not dead. But with that, I close. I close as I open in the name of Almighty God Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, and in the name of his last and greatest messenger, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who is not dead, I greet you in the nation's greeting of peace, of Isalam Alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the all wise and the true and living God, the Lord of all the worlds, the great knower of the seen and the unseen, and there is none like him. When we speak of Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad to the wilderness of North America and raised in our midst, his last and greatest messenger, Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We're not speaking of some spook or spirit God. We're not in the hands of spooks and spirits. Our enemy is a human being. Our enemy is the devil, and he's not no invisible spirit. We can see him and feel his presence daily. We've been in the midst of devils since we were kidnapped from our homeland, from our parents, our original forepence in the east. We've been in the hands of devils. This is going on now about 430 some years. That's a long time. We haven't had no peace since we left the East, our homeland. All we've been doing is catching hell. And we can never thank Allah enough. The reason why he didn't come sooner is because he had made a promise. It was prophesied that Abraham's seed would be a stranger in their land that was not theirs. They would be in bondage and be afflicted for 400 years. But at the end of the 400 years, God promised Abraham, no of a surety that I will go after them. Also, the reason why he hadn't come is because the devil himself, who is a grafted man, a made man, the Caucasian white race of people, they was given 6,000 years to rule without God interfering with their rulership. Right. Their time was not up until 1914. Ever since 1914, they have been living on grace, a grace period. What is the grace that extended to them? The time that it takes to wake up the black man in America. So I'm delighted to see you here this afternoon. You have come to a place that is not no church. This is not no church, not even nothing like no Christian church. That's the problem with our people right now. You've had gone to too many Christian churches. God himself referred to the Christian church as ice plants. Yes, sir. It's a place where they freeze the black man and black woman's minds. He referred to them all Uncle Tom preachers and they're preaching to you every Sunday. Preaching you up in the sky someplace after you're dead. Mm -hmm. Preaching all those spookism to you. Mm -hmm. He called them ice makers. Yes, sir. You go there and get your mind frozen. When you come to Muhammad's temple, one meeting of Muhammad's temple thaws your mind. Your mind begins to thaw out. Yes, sir. You understand? And it takes the truth. This is the final day of judgment. These are the last days. You don't have a long time to make up your mind. Let me see now whether or not I want to accept this. What you don't know is you're sitting out there is whether Allah wants to accept you. Because you've turned a deaf ear and been rebellious ever since 1930. This is 1994. Your parents before you was rebellious. You understand? Your grandparents was rebellious. Now here you come along, the children, you're going to still be rebellious. That means that's a, that's a rebellious seed. Right. That's a seed not worth saving. If your mother and your father rejected God and his messenger, and your grandmother and grandfather rejected God and his messenger, then that means, and you rejected him, that means your whole seed will be destroyed. God don't want nobody like you. Right. Do you understand? And why would you turn this down? It's the truth. Your heart, your mind, and your soul testifies that this is the truth. 
Here you are, the lost members of the God tribe of Shabbat. That's why God came after us. Think over this now. He said the white man made a fatal mistake when he kidnapped our parents. Think over this. He said he kidnapped the apple of God's eye, the lost members of God's divine family. Right. When you come to Muhammad's temple, you find not only who you are, you find who God is, that God is a man. Yes, sir. And he's not a white man. The divine supreme being is a black man. Yes, sir. Just think over this now. And this has been kept a secret between 12 black holy scientists for 66 trillion years. This is the first time that secret has been revealed to the general public is when Almighty God Allah, Master Farad Muhammad, came and revealed that secret to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's the first time anyone on earth has ever known who God is. In 66 trillion years, if it's been a secret, that's like forever. That's why everybody you talk to, oh, nobody can see God. Oh, no. God has to be an invisible spirit because nobody can see him. What you don't know is God being a black man, he could come and walk and sit right down beside you. You wouldn't even know it. Do you understand? Even the devils wouldn't even know it. So that's how the devil, in other words, Allah has seen what the devil has done to our people. Do you understand? Come and visit it with us and see what he has done. I'm so glad his time is up till I don't know what to do. Here, I, here the black man is all the hell you've caught from this white man. You got the nerve to get mad at, at God and his messenger for telling you the truth and taking up for the one. Oh, I don't believe the white man's the devil. Oh, no, all of them are not devils. That's like I come in and dump a whole bunch of rattlesnakes out there in your, in your lap out there. Oh, now some of these are, these are good, some of these are good snakes here. They're not all evil. Every one of them are carrying the same poison. Even a baby rattlesnake right. has the same poison. Oh, it's not as strong till he gets older. But he's still a dangerous snake yes. as a baby. Right? right? right so when, you, when he's born, when a little snake is born, a little rattlesnake is born. Oh, look at that cute little thing. Yeah, you keep on befriending that cute little thing, and he'll kill you. Right. He'll grow up and kill you, right? right? So they're all devils. Big ones, little ones, short ones, fat ones, born and unborn. Yes, sir. That's what the first time I was attended a meeting, that's the way I was like you. Now, wait just a minute now. You're going to tell me all white people are devils because I had some white buddies and friends and so forth, you know, like you. I said, wait a minute, you're going to tell me all of them are devils? He said, yes, sir, brother. Look me right in the eye. He said, fat ones, skinny ones, short ones, tall ones, born and unborn. He didn't give me not one devil to save. I wanted to save a devil or two, maybe a short one or maybe a fat one or something. He didn't give me no devil to save. He said, even if you see a devil woman going around pregnant, it's a little devil she's carrying. And when he's giving birth, in fact, all these devils giving you help. Weren't they once babies? You understand what I'm saying to you? But we're not here uh, to put emphasis on the white man being the devil. We're putting emphasis on the black man in America waking up to who you are. The God of our fathers and left heaven and come and suffer his own self. Look what he did. Put off his holy robes. Put off his crown of authority. Put on western style clothes. And came to North America in disguise. Then, so he could get up to us. So he wouldn't be recognized right away. Just think over this now. In fact, his father couldn't come. See, it, the God who was passed on from father to son. Master Farad Muhammad's father was the God before him. Do you understand? But his father was a jet black man, black in complexion. Right. He couldn't come because they would have recognized him right away. He had to kill everybody before he could save you and I. So he can, brings a special prepared son. Just one who is kind of light in complexion. Look like he's white. He can pass for white or black. Right. He could go in out of both civilizations and he wouldn't be recognized. Yes, sir. A special prepared one. Do you understand? Yes. In fact, how it happened, when it's, when it's time to come and get us, his father, this jet black man, God Almighty, divine supreme being, thinking, it's time for me to go after my people. How am I going to do this now without being recognized? How can I save them without having to kill all of these devils and half my own people too? So his son spoke to him from his, out of his loins. His son spoke to him and said, Father, Father, prepare me a body, and I'll go down and save them. Yes. What that means, he got the thought. Right. I know how I'll do this out of my loins. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I'll prepare a special one. I'll go get one, in other words, from the, a member of the Caucasian white race of people. 
that were saved when the devils were first made. They took some of them up in the mountains. Our parents took some up in the mountains and saved these little devil babies. And raised them as holy, righteous people. Do you understand? They didn't know anything about no devilish. They didn't know anything about no righteousness. So there they were up in the mountains. And he goes up into the mountains and gets one then a Caucasian, a member of the Caucasian white race of people. Even though she was still a holy person, she still was a devil. He had to bring her down into heaven and take her through five stages of purification. Think about this now. Five or seven. I think it was seven. Had to take her through seven stages of purification before he went into her. Do you understand? The Bible tells you there was a great wonder in heaven. When you read in the book of Revelation, this great wonder in heaven, that's what it was. In heaven, they had never seen no white person in heaven. There was a great wonder when he brought this woman down into the heavens. But he had to get a special prepared body. Yes. The, 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 father, the father's carrying the seed. Is that clear? Yes, yes, sir. So he has to come forth with a light complexion child. The first baby to come forth. In other words, he said, I think it was a, was a boy, but he's black in complexion. He couldn't send him. Then he gave birth to a, a girl. The right car. But she was a girl. Then the next one that came forth was Master Farad Muhammad. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Now remember when it comes time to pass the guard who went on from father to son. He might have four or five sons, but a special one of his sons, the one he passes the guard who went on to. So he takes up in the mountains and reveals all of his secrets to him. That's how he becomes the guard. You understand? So here come Master Farad Muhammad. When he was born, he was born wiser than his father. His father had to throw his crown into him. He was born with the knowledge that that first self-created black God, the same mind that that first self-created black God had, they created the son and made himself. Had that same identical mind. There's none like him. Master Farad Muhammad is, Elijah Muhammad told me his power and knowledge and wisdom is infinite. There's nothing he can't do. That's why to get his message, Elijah Muhammad, out alive with the people thinking that he's dead, that was easy for him to do. Right. Think about this now. So he could try the people. That's right. He got Elijah Muhammad out alive in a secret manner that everybody thinks that he's dead. And he's not dead. Not as yet. Everyone must die sooner or later because nothing or no one lives forever. Is that clear? But you can live as long as a thousand years without even growing old or ever being sick. If you had the right, right knowledge and wisdom and had the right atmosphere to breathe and the right water to drink and the right food to eat. Is that clear? The right herbs to take. So therefore... Master Farad Muhammad, when he came forth, wiser than his father. And he's the one that came after us. So sit back and relax a few minutes. Just relax. I know you're catching hell. I have to ask you, are you catching hell? You're in hell, and you're catching hell. Right. Day and night, all of us are catching hell. You wake up in the morning with nothing but problems. You hate to hear the phone ring. Every time the phone rings, it's a problem. When you get your mail, comes, when the mail comes, it's always a problem. You'll never hear no good news. When you go to church, you don't hear no good news. Jesus died to save your soul. And you said, Elijah Muhammad said, tell me to go back and try it again because we're catching too much. Our soul is catching too much hell. It didn't work. Yes, sir. If he died to save our souls, he died in vain. Yes, sir. That's a big lie. Mm-hmm. All Christianity is nothing but big, bare-faced lies. Right. A virgin woman having a baby without no father. And you believe that. Here you are with all your education believing that big, bare-faced lie. That a woman had a baby without no man. With all your education, all your traveling, a person died a physical death. Buried him and put him down in two boxes and covered both boxes up with dirt. Six feet below. And then he going to rise up out of that. You couldn't get out of those two boxes. If he was alive, you couldn't get out. Much less being dead. But the white man gets away with that lie, doesn't he? And he's enjoying heaven while he lives. But the best of everything, he don't have to worry about you interfering with it because you think you're going to some heaven in the sky. After you're dead, or oh, I'm going to have mansions like he has after I'm dead. I'm going to have sweet milk and honey like he has after I'm dead. All you need to do, if you want sweet milk and honey, go get your cow and some bees. So if you got to this heaven, there must going to be some cows and bees there, right? right. Yes, sir. Our people are so foolish, blind, deaf, and dumb. God calls our people. He said, you're dead, mentally dead. We're in the final hours of the judgment, almost in the final minutes of the judgment. I'm hoping I can wake you up before it's too late. 
I'm glad you came. Because this is your salvation. There's no one has no truth like this. You could not, there's no church in the world that you could go to and hear what you hear here at Muhammad's Temple of Islam. This is divine teaching. God held this back. If you notice, he held back the best of everything to give to you and I. When he came, he brought to you and I the best of his creation, the sun, the moon, and the star. And then tell you that you're one of the lost members of the God tribe of Shabazz. You're related to that first self-created black God, members of his divine family. That's great news. You've been wondering who you were. Haven't you been wondering, who, who am I really? What is my real purpose in life? You mean to tell me God going to leave heaven and come to hell to teach you the knowledge of yourself and come to save you, a savior to save you? You going to turn him down? If you turn him down, what do you turn him down for? What is in Christianity? What's in the white man that would make you turn down Almighty God Allah and his messenger Elijah Muhammad for the white man or anything in Christianity? Christianity was organized over there in Europe by these devils after they had murdered Jesus. Right. Do you understand? There was no religion called no Christianity during Jesus' time. Yes. Do you understand? What was God's religion during Jesus' time? Islam, like it always has been. Right. Do you understand? Peace. And then in fact, he tells you, peace on earth and goodwill to all men. Yes. That means Islam on earth and goodwill to all men. Right. The Bible tells you there's only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. But you've got 600 different faiths of Christianity. You got a trinity of lords, God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. It seems to me, since you got three gods to call upon, if one of them didn't hear you and didn't help you, why, where's the other two? When that devil come with his lynching mob to come after you, you can call on the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Right. You know what they tell you? If the Holy Ghost shows up here today, we'll lynch him too. And that's what he would do. Thou shalt not kill, he will kill thou. That's what a terrible devil we've been dealing with. But you can't even hear the truth. You sit up, you get mad. All they want to do is talk about the devil. All we're doing is telling you the truth. And Allah's an independent God. I want you to know I'm independent. I don't care whether you accept the truth or not. You can get right up here and walk straight out of here straight to your desk. That's where you'll be walking to. It makes me no difference. One thing I know of a surety. We're in the final hours of the judgment and you don't have much longer to live. You are deciding between life and death as you sit there right now. Elijah Muhammad gave us an ultimatum directly from God. He said, accept Islam and live or reject it and die. Is that clear? You've been wondering who you were. All right, now we've told you. You're a member of the God Chabas Shabazz, one of the lost members of the God Chabas Shabazz. Your name is not Jenkins and Roundtree and Culpepper and Witherspoon and all these devil's names, last names of white people. That's not your name. That's not you. When you walk around with those names, that's the white man's name. What is your name? Don't even care, do you? The Bible tells you, he that has the name of the beast, calling the devil a beast there. The, de the devil is referred to as beasts and dragons and snakes and serpents, right. lions, goats. What title is the black man referred to? The sheep. The sheep class of people, woolly-headed people. And the Bible plainly tells you, on the judgment day, the sheep sh shall be separated from who? The goats. Not going to integrate with goats. The sheep's not going to marry goats, have children by goats. If a sheep marries a goat and has a baby by a goat, what do you call that? It won't be a sheep. It won't be a goat. What will it be? A Negro. Right. <laughs> neither this nor that. That's what a Negro is. Neither this nor that. Do you understand? That's something to think about, isn't it? We have been a very, very foolish people. And we're not going to even argue with you now. They're not even going to argue with you. I wouldn't care. If, if you get mad at what I'm saying, get, you can get up and leave right now if you want to. I wouldn't even care. Because I know you won't be around here very much longer. In fact, our people are killing each other. They aren't, the devil don't have to kill. They're killing each other. In fact, he reported me last night right down in front of the restaurant there. A little young boy come in the restaurant, went outside, and a, another young boy killed him right there on the spot, right there, right in front of the restaurant. And that's something. Try to take his jacket. He had one of them, they say, start a coach or something on. And the other one tried to take it. And so he was fighting to, to hold on to it. Do you understand? He pulls out a gun and shoots him in his head three times. Kills him right on the spot. This is going on day and night all over America. In every major city and other cities. If you got children, you hit to send them to school. You don't know whether they're going to get back alive or not. Do you? 
Got all your little children. This whole civilization of Christianity has totally collapsed. Little children, that big walking around cursing and swearing and carrying guns. Little babies. Christianity has been nothing but hell for you and I. You should jump up and ask me right now, how do I go by? I'm ready to accept this right now. Yes, sir. It is your own and it is the truth. Is that clear? It's too bad. We have so much to tell you in such a little time to tell you, tell it to you. And you're so rebellious. That's why we have to invite you to the temple where we we can sit you down, where you can't talk. You understand? Where all you can do is listen for a little while. Then fill your head with the truth and turn you loose. You might run wild and argue and fuss and act crazy for a little while, but once we get the truth into your forehead, in other words, it'll begin to take effect. I would just like you, every one of us, everyone that you see in here right now that call ourselves Muslims. Every one of us was in Christianity. Right. Every one of us has Christian parents. We, right to this very minute we've got Christian parents. That's right. And grandparents. Yes. Blind, deaf, and dumb, and hard-headed just like some of you sitting here right now. Yes. So don't look at us as though we're some strangers or foreigners now, in other words, them old Muslims. We are your brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and grandmothers and grandfathers. Is that clear? The same dog that bit you snagged us. Right. The same devil. We came from the same devil. Only difference is when we heard the truth, we recognized it as the truth. That's right. We woke up. Yes, and as soon as we wake up, we run back to truck. Oh, wait till mama hears this. Wait till daddy hears this. Wait till grandma hears this. This is what grandma was telling me about. One day, Ethiopia is going to rise up and spread forth her wings till they touch from all one end of the earth to the other. What, what does that mean, Aunt Sophie? It means that the black man is going to rise up one day. Something's going to take place and he's going to rise up. He's going to rule the world like he once did. So when I hear the truth, I run to Aunt Sophie. Oh, Aunt Sophie, what you told me as a little young boy, here it is. At last it's here. She looked at me as though I was crazy. They begin to call me. The boy didn't lost his mind. He's crazy. I didn't lose my mind. I lost the devil's mind. I had the devil's mind. I was seen out of his eyes. That's why you can't see the truth right now. You're not looking up at this boy with your eyes. You're looking up here with the devil's eyes. To criticize, you understand. If you notice the devils, we didn't invite the devil here. No white devils at least. We might have a few black devils here. But no white, Caucasian white devils are here. That's right, there are some black devils. So why are you worrying about the white devil? Elijah Muhammad said God told him that the black man got to watch him. He said he'll turn into a devil on you overnight. And when he turns into a devil... A black devil, he said, is seven times worse than a white devil. Yes. That's right. Some of our people, you, you, you're actually, you're seven times worse than a white. I'd rather be dealing to a white, with a white devil than be dealing with you. Right. Some of you. Some of these Caucasian devils, they know this is the truth. Some of these Caucasian devils have accepted Elijah Muhammad. And they believe in Allah. They believe in Matthew Muhammad Muhammad's the God. There's a group of devils, a remnant of devils that's going to be saved. That's a pitiful thing to think of. That a remnant of devil is going to be saved and you're going to end up going to a lake of fire because you're seven times worse than a real devil. You can be reformed. The devil can't help himself. He was made that way. But you are just imitating the devil. You want to be like the devil. You don't even want to hear what your own right name is. You don't want to hear what your own right title is. You'd rather be called an Afro-American or a so-called Negro or Afro-anything. But you don't want to be called by your right title, which is a Muslim. That's your right title, a Muslim. A Muslim is one who has a natural inclination toward his creator. You're born that. Muslim is something you join or become. You are born a Muslim. Every black man, woman, or child on the earth is born a Muslim. Born with a natural inclination toward his creator. It's his mother and father who caused him or her to become something else. If he's born over in the jungles among the people that wear plates to the lips. They got the little child before the little child can walk very good. They didn't start trying to get his lips stretched out. Start putting little plates in his lips. And he gets older, put a big plate. And he look up, pretty soon here he comes. Born a righteous Muslim. With a natural inclination toward God. Now we see him a little bit later. Got a great big old plate walking around in his mouth. Think about this now. That's fashionable. Got himself all tattooed up and all marked up in his hair. And all kind of crazy braids. Do you understand? Look at this, is wild and crazy. Bones in his nose, rings in his nose, rings in his ears. Think over that. And his hair looking as wild and crazy. Five parts, 30 braids. Don't even wash his hair. Nasty and stinky. Just think over this now. Just like a wild man out of the jungles. You ready for the jungles. 
That's where some of you are going, to the Belgian Congo, to the jungles of the Belgian Congo. You would never recognize as our people, but as I say, your parents are what make you what you are. If your parents was Catholic, they'd raise you as Catholic, didn't they? If it was Baptist, they'd raise you as Baptist. If there was a holy roller, they'd raise you as a holy roller. But that's not who you are. You are a Muslim. Don't think you, we're trying to get you, oh, I'm not going to join them old Muslim. You're already a Muslim and don't know it. Think over this now. The whole 30 million black people in America are all Muslims, but they don't know it. So God's getting ready to deal with you, mother. He always gets what he goes after. Don't think that Almighty God stepped down from the highest seat in the heaven and came to the hell of North America to be defeated. He gets what he comes after. He's going to save the ones he wants to save. He's going to burn up the ones that's rebellious. And others are going to exile to the Belgian Congo. So one way or the other, you can either be saved and delivered to a heavenly place on earth, a secret place on earth, where you will be living in $17 million homes, the mansions that they talk about in heaven, where you will never be sick, there's no insane asylum, no hospitals, no jailhouses. You'll never grow old there. You'll have the age of, your age will be turned back to 16. You're either going to receive that reward, or you're going to the Belgian Congo, or you're going to the Lake of Fire. So take your choice. It makes no difference to me which one you choose. It's up to you. And I want you to know nobody else is coming after you. This is it. Jesus of 2,000 years ago that the white man murdered and told a lie on after they killed him that he died to save your soul. He couldn't get back if he wanted to. The man is dead. And I think you are very foolish people to think that a man that was on earth 2,000 years ago is going to come back and save you. He didn't even know you. There was no such thing as a Negro 2,000 years ago. There wasn't even no such place as America 2,000 years ago. Was there or did you know that? America didn't even exist. There was no such thing as an English language 2,000 years ago. There's no such place as England 2,000 years ago. Go. Is that clear? That shows you how uninformed that you are. You turn down this and you're turning down your only salvation. Is that clear? Now, I didn't mean to come in and start on you so hard, but I, I have the feeling that we don't have much time left, so I, I, I said I better come here quickly and, and, and get your brains opened up, your brain cells, and let you know that you don't have a big, long time to make up your mind. Now, what I really had prepared today, in other words, I, I, I have a special subject I'm, I want to, I'm coming after those, all the many little satellite ministers are jumping up everywhere. Yes, Act like they're ministers. In other words, haven't been sent nowhere. You understand? And all they're doing is confusing the people. So I'm preparing something special. I'm going to be this special tape I'm preparing. So this tape I'm preparing, I would suggest you get it and listen very careful. But uh, I'm really preparing it for them. And I'm going to also put it in writing. This is what I'm saying here today. This is something very special I prepared. So when in it, you'll see I'm um, really talking to them. So sometimes the phraseology sounds like I'm saying them and he and so I'm talking to them because it's special prepared for them. And my subject matter is, I have not sent them, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. This can be found in the Bible, Jeremiah 23, 21. Behold, I am against the prophet, said the Lord. They use their tongues and say, he saith. Jeremiah 23, 31. Use their tongues, yet they're saying, he saith. So many of the so want to be ministers. I should say many rose up. So want to be ministers. Rose up since the army of Elijah Muhammad left in 1975. And when the army of Elijah Muhammad was taken out of our midst in 1975, it left us in temporary darkness. And all these little satellite, satellite ministers that have jumped up since then, they are like the multitude of stars that we see in the night sky. When it's night, all of a sudden you look up in the night and you see a multitude of stars. During the absence of the sun, they come up. You don't see them while the sun is out, but in the absence of the sun, a multitude of stars, right? We see them in the night sky. But now it's time for them to fade away because the daybreak is here. The dawn of a new day is here. And I want you to understand that. Behold, I make all things new. We can see the morning star Tariq on the horizon, which appears at the end of the night. The morning star is a sign that the mighty sun is on the way. And it is written, the Lord whom you seek 
will suddenly come to his temple. The morning star is like a messenger sent to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. The star that you see in our nation, that one star that you see, what does it represent? It represents all the other stars, but there's only one star in our national. That one star there justifies the fact that the sun is still shining on another part of the planet Earth, even though it's night, dark. You understand? The star justifies the fact that the sun is still shining, that you're only in temporary darkness. Pretty soon you will see the sun again. What are the qualifications to be chosen as a a divine messenger or prophet of God? First and foremost, a divine messenger of God is not the people's choice. Is that clear? He's not put in that high office because the masses of the people admire him and are applauding him and praising him. The masses of the people cannot elect their messenger of God into office. They can't elect him into office or out of office. Is that clear? A divine messenger of God is not chosen because of his education he has received from his peers or his slave masters or so-called influential educators of the day. He's not chosen because of his education. I bring to your mind the prophet and messenger of Allah, Muhammad of Arabia, 1400 years ago. He was called the unlettered prophet because he could hardly read or write. Yes, sir. Think about this. In fact, when he was complaining and saying, I, well, I can't, uh, I can't write. What do you want me to write? I can't write. Mm-hmm. So God let him know, I'm the one that, <laughs> that caused you to be able to write and be able to read and be able to see. Yes. Neither is a divine messenger of God chosen because of, of his oratorical skills, mm-hmm. which is the ability to, to speak very well. Is that clear? Yes, sir. I just told you about Muhammad of Arabia with no education. And you know he was not a skilled speaker or orator or writer before he ma- made contact with Allah. Right. You understand? He did not have these skills. So he wasn't chosen for that purpose. So I bring to your mind the great prophet and divine messenger of God, Musa, Moses. I want you to listen to his conversation with God when he was being chosen. Exodus 4.1. Listen to his conversation. Make a notation of these things that I'm telling you. Moses answered and said, when God called, said, Behold, he said, They will not believe me when he's appointing him, nor hearken unto my voice. They will say, The Lord has not appeared unto thee. And then he said, And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent in speech. Neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken to thy servant. But I am slow of speech. And I am of a slow tongue. So he couldn't have been chosen because of his eloquent speech. Speak making. The Lord said unto him, Who maketh the dumb or the deaf? Or the seeing or the blind? And who caused the dumb to be able to speak? Who caused the blind to be able to see and the deaf to hear? Have not I the Lord? And therefore, go, I will be thy mouth, and teach whom thou wilt send. Think over this. You just go and obey me. Right. So he wasn't chosen for that purpose. Also, we all know about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the last and greatest messenger of them all. You know he only had a third grade education. You know he had no oratorical skills to speak very well. Before his meeting with Almighty God, Allah. But after his meeting with Almighty God, Allah, he taught him more when the messenger roared. It like, sounded like a lion roaring. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, right. The truth that he teaches is to wake up a, a dead person. Right. Out of their grave. That's what it's designed for, to bring forth a dead person out of your grave of ignorance. Right, right. This teaching is designed for that purpose. To wake you up from a mental death and to resurrect you out of a grave of ignorance. That's the only grave you will ever be resurrected out of is a grave of ignorance. I know you're not going to come up out of a cemetery, out of the graveyard. We're having too hard of a time just getting you out of the grave of ignorance. And Noah was chosen because Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. It wasn't because if he had some great ability to speak because he was some great man. He just found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You know, Noah preached and warned the people for 120 years. You know how old Noah was when the flood came? 600 years old. 
Just think over that. 600 years old when the flood came. So when we tell you Master Farad Muhammad is now 117 years old, he's just a baby. Right. Make it like just think over that. <laughs> they lived to be, no, in fact, Methuselah lived to be over 900 years old. Yes, sir. Our parents used to live to be hundreds of years old, you understand, before this devil came forth. Is that clear? Ever since then, now they say the, the age of a man, three score and ten. You're lucky if you can live to be three score and ten. In hell. So when the flood came, this is, this, you can look in the Bible, Genesis 7, 6. He was 600 years old when the flood came. I'm pointing all this out to you to show you that God always chooses a man to represent him of a very humble origin. Is that clear? He wants a meek, humble man. In fact, I'm like one when he sent me to you to teach you. He said, I don't want you going there trying to show off some little education that you might have. I want you to speak the common language of the, of the common people. I don't want you using a whole lot of big words that, just to show off that most of our people can't understand. I want you to speak a common language that all of our people can understand. So they won't have no excuse. Well, what it was the reason why I didn't accept it, Lord, because he was speaking over my head. I didn't understand them big words he was using. You understand? So he forbid me to come before you speaking using a whole lot of big words that goes over your head. It's better to speak two or three words that a person can understand than a multitude of words that nobody can comprehend. What good does that do you if I'm speaking in a way that only a few intellectuals in the audience, now I'm showing off before these two or three intellectuals with, with degrees, and 90% of the poor people out there didn't even understand what was going on. Or, what would it look like I got the message free and I do like Farrakhan did this past Savior's Day. Charge the people $10 to come to Savior's Day meeting in Chicago. Yeah, that's something. You get it free. Now, the point I'm bringing out to you, the common people cannot afford to pay no $10. Yes, sir. The people that, that pay the $10, they don't need, they don't need the truth no way. They already think they already know anyway. They think they don't need to be saved. Is that clear? But the poor man in the mud who needs the teaching, he can't afford to go to it because they charge him $10. When it should be free. No, I'm like, well, I'm never charge nobody. When you come to the service day meeting in Chicago, not only would the meeting be free, he would give everybody free meals. He'd pay everybody from out of town's hotel bill free. Yes, sir. Just think over this now. That's the kind of man he is. I represent him. Yes, sir. I'm directly from him. I'm not in the right. I'm directly from him. Yes, right. He divinely commissioned me and sent me to you. Yes, sir. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And I fear to disobey him. I am his true disciple. So Allah never chooses a proud or an arrogant man who is boastful and egotistical and saying, I am this and I am that. When without Allah, we are nothing. Right. All praise is due to Allah. Is that clear? <laughs> so as I say now, this is a special tape I'm preparing for these little satellite so want to be ministers out there, they're going to have to get in check because right now they're like a body out there floating around without no head. Like a chicken with his head off. Chicken is jumping all around everywhere, but we know pretty soon he's going to die. He can't go no place because he don't have no head. There are only three ways a leader can come before the people. Be self-sent, elected by the, by the majority or the ignorant masses, or God-sent. Which one do you want to follow as your leader? That's something for you to consider. You're going to follow a man just because the majority of the ignorant masses are applauding and clapping him and say, ooh, that's, just go follow that man. You're going to follow because of that? If a man claims that he is God sent, that don't satisfy you. still got to ask him, who is the God that sent you? The God of evil, the devil? Or the God of peace and righteousness, the God of good? The God of peace and righteousness is Almighty God, Allah. Is that clear? Yes, sir. The devil's a God too, but he's a God of evil. And he sends out many, many preachers. He ordains them, as he calls them. Is that clear? Yes, sir. They're walking around with a license ordered by the devil himself. You know, some of the greatest prophecy of Jesus of 2,000 years ago was, Beware of the false prophets. Mm -hmm. Beware of wolves dressed in sheep's clothes. That means someone coming to you, in other words, that's like your own kind, only he's a wolf coming to destroy you. 
But he's got on sheep's clothing. And that way there he can easily get up close to you and deceive you if he's got on sheep's clothing. Remember the little red riding hood? And the wolf? Think about this now. Oh, oh, uh, Grandma, what, what big eyes you have. You know, when she saw something on you, something wasn't right there. The better to see you with, my dear. Oh, Grandma, what big eye ears you have. The better to hear you with, my dear. Think over this now. Oh, Grandma, what a big mouth you have. Right. The big mouth wolf. <laughs> Great big loud mouth. The better to eat you with, the better to devour you with. Then she had to run for her life. A wolf dressed up in grandma's clothes, a wolf in sheep's clothing. So, so many false prophets and so want to be leaders have emerged since the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was taken out of our midst in a divine manner in 1975 until they had the people actually in a state of confusion. They don't know what they should do, they don't know who to follow. It is written of them, I did not send them. Yet they ran. I did not speak to them. Yet they prophesied. They gathered together a handful of followers and called themselves ministers of Elijah Muhammad. Self-sent. Untrained. Unqualified. And not knowing the way. Yes, I'm speaking to all these little satellite ministers so want to be ministers. And I want to make sure you hear this tape. Not knowing the way yet acting important and unwilling to be guided by those who were sent and who know the way. No one will ever be able to unite, unite all of these self-sent so want to be leaders. Or their little handful of followers. You'll never be able to get them, unite them. There are so many of these little self-sent Muslim ministers claiming they are representing the Honorable Elijah Muhammad until they have become like the Uncle Tom preachers of Christianity. With a little storefront church, you understand, on every corner, and one in between the corners. Think about this. Calling it Muhammad's temple of Islam. Yes. Most of the time they don't have no one in there. But their families in the temple with them. No one sitting in the seats. That's a little family. And I know this to be a fact. Yet with this handful of people. They show more of their ignorance. That they don't know the way by appointing assistant minister. Here you got a little handful of people. Nobody but your family. And you got, I got to have an assistant minister. You understand? Captain, secretary, lieutenant, having business cards printed up with big long titles and holy names, which they've given themselves. Think about this now. One day I was there, and one of these ministers showed up in the message. Said, what, what are you doing? How, where did you come from? Why did you get in this meeting here with the with the ministers? And they were, I didn't send for you. So he said, uh, I never will forget this little brother here. He said, Oh, uh, he said, you know me. Uh, Mr. Yes, I sure do know you. And so he said, how many is in your temple? He got, he's got five people in his temple. He said, you mean to tell me you got a minister? He said, you got an assistant minister, a captain and a secretary, and lieutenant. He said, who's sitting in the seats? Don't have but five and all them officials. Who's in the seats? Nobody. He said, get up and get out of this meeting here, brother. You're not no minister. Not no minister of mine. You might be a minister, but you're not no minister of mine. In fact, to be recognized as a temple, you needed 25 FOI and 25 MGT, 25 sisters. Here there were 8 or 10 people, 15 or 20 people there calling themselves ministers. They got some title. You got to see the titles they're wearing. The all-wise one, the glorious one, the king, the mighty gods. Think about the great big titles they can't live up to if they had two lifetimes. <laughs> And they think they can steal the honor of Elijah Muhammad's words and writings and make themselves important in the eyes of the people. I'm letting you know what's going on out there, where all, where all the problem is coming from. These are the self-sent, self-named, so want to be ministers are insane for leadership. And they do not represent the honorable Elijah Muhammad. They misrepresent our great leader and teacher, the honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's misrepresentation. This is why God, Allah, nor his messenger, Elijah Muhammad, did not choose you in the first place. And don't say Allah and his messenger, messenger, messenger did not know you were here. Allah knows everything and everyone. Right. So he knows you were here, my little state of life, minister, self-sent. Allah was here in the person of Master Farad Muhammad for three and one half years. And he did not choose you. 
or no one in your family to represent him as one of his ministers. And our Elijah Muhammad was in our midst for 44 years, and he did not choose you or no one in your family as one of his ministers or name you. So what gives you the authority to appoint yourself and name yourself with some great big holy name? They're going to be very angry when they get this news. But that's what I want to do. I want to shake them up a little bit. Yes, sir. We're tired of this foolishness. Most of these so want to be self-appointed ministers, want to be leaders, and they have never been a good follower of no one, not even the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So I say to the sincere truth seekers and the true followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, shun these self-sent so want to be ministers who are misrepresenting the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. By using his name to shield their false apostolic ship. They are imposters. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Pointed themselves. They haven't been chosen. They appointed themselves. Most of these phony self-sent, self-named ministers condemn and speak evil against everyone who was taught and trained and sent by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad himself. No matter what they have done, worthy of condemnation, while the message was in our midst, or since he has been taken out of our midst, who are they to judge another man's servants? No matter what they have done, they were chosen above you. This is what I'm saying to them, and I hope they're paying attention to what I'm saying when they get this message. No matter what they've done, they were chosen above them. Allah know his last messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, did not choose you. And the just judge who chose them will judge his own servants with justice. If any of us chosen by him, if we do anything wrong, Allah is our judge. Is that clear? Yes. He will judge us with justice, not them. And the Holy Quran says Allah chastises whom he pleases and he forgives whom he pleases. I don't care what sin you go out there and forget. Look what he said. He said to tell you when you first come in, I don't care what you have done. In the past, I will I forgive you. The minute that you accept Allah's messenger, he said, I forgive you of everything you've ever done wrong in your past, in your life. You start off with a complete new slate. You are forgiven. You are born with no sin on you. That's the devil born with under sin, not you. Is that clear? Yes. You've just been imitating him. But he said, I forgive you. No matter what you've done, you have been forgiven. That alone should make you want to accept this. Look what the devil said. You was born with a curse on you, born under sin. And you got to get that curse off of you. He's the one with the curse on him, not you. You wasn't born in no sin. You was born a righteous Muslim, just like I just got through telling you. So Allah chastises whom he pleases, and he forgives whom he pleases. And none can escape the judgment of the just judge today. Allah in the person of Master Farad Muhammad and his last and greatest messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that's the just judge. The two are one. When one speaks, or when one judges, they both judge with the same judgment. In fact, the Prophet Muhammad said we can't get to Allah without coming through him first. You can't jump over Elijah Muhammad and get to Allah just like you couldn't jump over Moses and get to God. You couldn't jump over Jesus and get to God. Is that clear? You couldn't jump over Muhammad or Arabia and get to Allah. You got to come through these messengers. Remember Jesus' words? I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth and the light. And no man can come to the Father except what? Except he come by me. Elijah Muhammad said the same thing. You can't get to Allah. He said, without coming by me and me first. Dr. Elijah Muhammad said, Allah told him, Whoever you shut out, Elijah, I will not let in. And whoever you let in, Elijah, which means the door of the hereafter, I will not shut out. This means Elijah will have to be standing at the door, not dead. Right? And he's the one, if, if he said, whoever you shut out, I won't let in. Don't he have to be at the door there, shutting people out or letting them in? He can't be dead. Not as yet. Only the evildoers want the honor of Elijah Muhammad dead and preach that he is dead. And don't want to even consider the possibilities that Master Farad Muhammad, who has infinite power and supreme wisdom, could get his last and greatest messenger out of hell alive in a divine manner. 
This is what he promised him. Think about this. He said, no matter what happens, Elijah, we will get you out alive. He said, I don't care if they have dead bodies stacked up on your porch all the way from the floor up to the top of the porch. We will get you out alive. Just think over this. Are you death wishers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad calling God a liar? Or seeing he broke his promise to his last and greatest messenger? When the Holy Quran says Allah never breaks his promise to no one. Are you death wishers also calling the Honorable Elijah Muhammad a liar? When he says no one will ever see Elijah die or point out a grave site for him. No one would ever see Elijah die. It's written in the Bible. Elijah went to heaven how? Whole soul and body. No one saw Elijah die. He said, even if they show you a dead body in a casket, it won't be me. So if they don't believe this, then they're called not only God a liar, calling Elijah Muhammad a liar. So how can you call both of them a liar and say, oh yeah, I was Elijah Muhammad. You are the liar yourself saying that. If you wasn't a liar, you'd be preaching the same thing Tariq Hamza was preaching. Elijah Muhammad is not dead as yet. So come on, you death wishes of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and challenge the sword of Hamza, the servant of Muhammad, the sword of truth, which he gave to me to uphold his name and his divine words. He spoke to me in my ears. That's right, divine words, he spoke to me in my ears. He didn't speak to you in your ears, he spoke to me in my ears. I'm talking to these self-sent ones, not you, my beloved people out here. I have divine instruction from the Lord for these last days. What are you instructing from the Lord, Mr. Arrogant, so want to be ministers? Who want the messenger dead before he dies? This proves you don't believe in the Honorable Elijah Muhammad or Master Farah Muhammad. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the two are one. When one speaks, they both speak. When one acts, they both act. So if one is dead, then they both are dead. Right? If you check the history of the death wishes of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, check their history, all the ones that say Elijah Muhammad's dead, you will find they have done such evil things in the sight of the Lord when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was here in our midst, and since he left, that they can't stand even the thought of him still being alive and coming forth to judge them. Some of them have murdered or killed brothers and sisters unjustly. Or there was an accomplice in such evil acts, even in the temple. Isn't that something? Some of them actually have either killed people in the brothers in the temple, or they helped somebody else kill them, right in the temple itself. And actually, if you've done an evil act like that, you don't want to hear no nothing about Elijah coming back. Some gave orders for others to be killed or beaten. Who Allah did not order to be killed. You must not kill no one who Allah has not ordered to be killed. Right. Muhammad, like Muhammad said, if you go out and kill a brother or a sister, anyone, the law of Islam is, the law of God is, that you cannot continue to live on the planet Earth. You must be hunted down and found wherever you are and killed right there on the spot. Right, right. You're not allowed to take a brother or sister's life that Allah has not ordered them to be killed. And when Allah orders one to be killed, he goes before an executioner, a just judge judges him, and the executioner has got his great big sword out, Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, boom, and off goes your head. Do you understand? That's who Allah has ordered to be killed. But that executioner is not allowed to kill no one that Allah has not ordered to be killed. The devil kills people unjustly. Puts you in an electric chair, hangs you. Takes you before the firing squad, doesn't he? Yes, He's the God of his world, the devil. What makes you think God is not the God of his world? Right. So if you act up in his world, he has ways and means to deal with you. Others have committed all kinds of unnatural sex acts with both male and female. Many of the death wishes of the only Elijah Muhammad are homosexuals and lesbians have committed divinely forbidden sex acts with Caucasian white devils, which you can be forgiven even of all those acts. Why don't you don't turn against Allah and his messenger? There's nothing you can't be forgiven of except turning against Allah and his messenger. Some were robbers and thieves of the army Elijah Muhammad himself. Will a man rob God? Yes. Rob him of tithes and offerings. 
I know they have done this. Personally know that they have done this. The money that was due to Ambulance Elijah Muhammad, steal it themselves. Some were drug addicts and drug users. Some carried guns and other weapons, which was forbidden by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Even assassinating other ministers. That's right. Some ministers were assassinated. Remember the brother over there in New Jersey that assassinated him? Brother in Texas. What was that brother's name in Texas? William. No, it wasn't William. Can't think of his name right now. Assassinated that brother. I know a couple others. It was, in fact, I met a woman the other day over there in the store, and she mentioned him, this, her son, had it, her brother, rather. He'd come over to the school and so forth. He was a very nice brother. And I said, well, how's he doing? She said, oh, they, they assassinated him. And I remember when they come to him, and they come to the door of the brother, in other words, he said, oh, no, brother, what are you doing? But they boom, boom, boom down and shot him down. You think over this. Terrible things. Now, all these kinds of done acts like that, naturally, they don't want to hear no word of the Elijah Muhammad coming back to judge them. Right. Some are dismissed off their post as ministers by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for some evil act on their part. And they know I know them. Every one of them, I know them. I know the one that stole the message of money. Do you understand? I know the one that committed all these evil acts. I saw him dismiss these ministers off their post. They weren't even in good standing when Elijah Muhammad left. Now that here you see him coming forth to act like there's some great, big, important minister. You understand? And Elijah Muhammad, I heard him tell them right to his face, I don't even want no kind of minister like you representing me. Yes, yes. Now they here they are trying to hold some prominent place out there. So they hate Minister Tariq Hamza. Oh, him calling his the morning star. Yes, I want all of you to listen. Are you listening right now? I am the morning star. And I won't back down off of it. Yes, I was divinely called into the ministry with Elijah Muhammad talking directly in my ears from Chicago to, to Youngstown. I ask you, how were you called into the ministry? Did he talk to you in your ears? Think over this now. So I know who he is. He revealed himself before he left to me who he really is. That he's more than just a messenger. What did he reveal to you? Some of them were drug addicts and drug users. You understand? They did many kind of a things. So all of the above mentioned, they, be, they become infuriated over the thought of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad not being dead as yet. I mean, they get become furious. I mean, they begin to spit out venom like a like a asp, a poison snake. Right. When they hear this, I mean, they I mean, they become so infuriated, another they almost got in their mind. Right. This going to cuss me at Tariq Hamza. Yeah, that Tariq Hamza is going to be with Elijah Muhammad to help throw you into a lake of fire. <laughs> they don't want to have to face the just judge who knows them and all the evil acts they have committed. Yes, he did say he would not come back as the messenger of our law and look the staff over. That's the thing that some of these old little old Uncle Toms come up talking about. I, we, we go by his writing, what Elijah Muhammad said. Yes, he did say that. I won't be coming back to look the staff over as no messenger. But he did not say he would not come back as the judge and judge the evildoers. What do you think he meant when he said, when you see Allah on the judgment day, don't be surprised if you see me. So I asked him, what do you think he meant when he said that? I did not send them but yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they preached and prophesied, trying to rise to glory by using my name and my written material. What is there to keep the Caucasian devils from doing the same thing? If he is a believer in honor of Elijah Muhammad and his teachings, and there are some, he could jump up and do the same thing, couldn't he? I got the writings, here's what he said. Yeah, but he didn't talk to you in your ears. I know what he said in my ears about you and them. You didn't get that. He had the same, the devil had the same written material in audio tapes and videotapes as you have. And most of these so want to be leaders and self-appointed foolish ministers, they make sure he has it by presenting it to the devil public. And then they get their hands on it, make it to the public. Right. Think about this now. You don't even have the wisdom to keep nothing of divine wisdom private 
or just for the true followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The devil has all kind of things. He keeps private, only for devils. He don't let the black man know none of his personal private business. But everything these fools get their hands on, you make sure the devil has it. This is why he didn't choose you in the first place, to speak into your ears as he did some of us. You are not confidential enough for Allah or his messenger to reveal any of the secrets of God to. Which would actually qualify you to be a ruler. Once you get the secrets of God, that's what qualifies you to be the ruler. Look how these black men I just told you now, look how confidential they were. Keep a secret for 66 trillion years. That's a long time, isn't it? Right. You couldn't keep a secret for two seconds hardly, two minutes. And then we tell you a secret, the first thing, first person you meet. Now, whatever you do, don't tell nobody this now. In other words, whatever you do, I promise I wouldn't tell nobody. Whatever you do, and that's when he gets it. Whatever you do, pretty soon everybody knows it. Not a secret no more. Like Brother Herbert, got this secret down there in the National City Bank. In vault, safety part of box 517. <laughs> the secrets of God nobody knows. But yes, in the devil's safety deposit box in his bank. Which the devil has the power to lock him out of the safety deposit box. Right. And the devil has a key to it. How can you say it's a secret if you got a key and the devil has a key to your safety deposit box? Isn't that foolish? Yes, sir. If he did know the secret, now that you big mouth and told him that I got something private in there, he'll, he'll be sure to go look at it. Right. So our people are not very confidential, are they? That's why you don't know too much. That's why the believers right this minute. You might be delivered tonight. Can't tell you. If you knew you were going to be delivered tonight, you'd be telling everybody. Oh, Grandma, all of you, you all ought to be standing, be down there. There wouldn't be room to get on the board or the plane. Where are you getting on? You'd have a million people down there waiting. There wouldn't even be room for them. Do you understand? So they can't even tell you. When you get saved, you won't even know you're being saved. You think, we, you think we're going on a little trip, a little vacation. You won't know that you're getting ready to be delivered. The Prophet Elijah Muhammad said, I will never reveal my complete revelation to no one unless I am sure of you. And he did not put it in writing for evildoers and black devils or white devils to, to hear or see. So what you see in writing... It's what you get. And that's all you get. And the devil has the same thing. So that's what I want them. That's the message I want for them. What you see, since you say, we going by all the right, but that's all what you see is what you get. Right. He didn't whisper nothing to you. Didn't give them no instructions for this day. I do have divine instructions for this day. Yes. If you ask them, who sent you? They sent themselves. Yes. Who are you going to lead us to? Or we're going to complete Elijah Muhammad's works. You don't even know Elijah Muhammad's works. He told me, he said that I have even not even started my real work as yet. Right. He told me that's what he's preparing me for. When he does his real work. This is just a little inkling of his real work. And I hope they'll pay attention. They're not going to be able to continue fluttering around out there, in other words, a body without no head. Is that clear? Because you can't go no place. You can't help nobody. You can't save nobody. They can't even save themselves. They're going to have to submit to some hand. Is that clear? Yes, sir. You say, what do you want them to do? Come to you? I'm, I don't care who you go to. In other words, I am from the Lord. Is that clear? Yes, sir. I know the way. I, know, I promised you I will get you to Elijah Muhammad. I can't take you beyond that, but I can get you to Elijah Muhammad. Right, right. They can't get you to, to Elijah Muhammad because they think he's dead. Is that clear? They'll be dead before Elijah Muhammad dies. And when Elijah Muhammad says, when he does die, his body's not going to be placed in the ground in no kind of a casket of no kind. He said his body's going to be petrified. And he'll be able to see what this blast and this messenger of God look like. He said hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years from now, they'll be able to see his body. Exactly the way he was while he was living. Petrified. In the exact state that he's in right now. The last and greatest messenger of God. Our children's 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 children. Be able to go there and point. There he is. Just think over that now. What a great messenger he is. What a great God it is to come and send him. One that there's none like him. None like Matthew Farad Muhammad. Right, yes, sir. The God of all gods. Lord of all lords. King of all kings. None like him. Just think over this. No one hasn't seen a God like that appear with the mind he has 
since the first self-created, God created the sun. uh, Trillions of years ago. We don't know when it was. Trillions of years ago. He created himself out of total darkness. Before a sun was even made, he was in total darkness. That's why he had to be a black God. Where was he going to get any light from? He's the one that called for the sun, for the light, right? Let there be light. He had to be in the dark, a black God standing there calling for the light. Because there was no light nowhere to be found. So he called for the light. He made the sun. And he didn't tell nobody the secret of how he made that mighty, mighty sun. Kept that to himself. He did not pass it on to none of his sons to pass on to their sons. He kept that in his own forehead. He can go and come as he pleases through his own sons. Is that clear? I thank you. It's been delightful talking to you. I'm sorry I kind of weighted you down with some things I wanted to say to these little satellite ministers here. But I, I wanted them to hear how it's good for you to hear this too. Yes, sir. But I'm directed to them. This is your salvation. Your, your Savior has arrived. Yes. He's not to come. He already is here. If a black God didn't come to save you, can you imagine a white God? A white God wouldn't come. A white God would put you in on his plantation. Right. If the white man was God, I would tell you right now, the black man on earth wouldn't have a chance. Is that clear? They would destroy us all. That's what he's been trying to do. He was given 6,000 years. If you can destroy all the black people on earth, then go ahead and destroy it. If you can do it in 6,000 years. He wasn't able to do it. Right. Now, now the black man is going to come and destroy him. The great black God of the universe is going to destroy him. That's who put him in the cage. Ask him. Say, Mr. Caucasian devil, white man, I study your history and I see you was in the cage for 2,000 years. How did you get in those caves? Did you put yourself there or was it one of our kind that put you there? Mr. Devil, after 2,000 years in the caves, you got out of the caves. Somebody come and got you and raised you up. Was that one of your own kind that raised you up, or was that one of ours, a black man that came and got you? Make was it. Moses white or black? Moses was one of our kind. Right. He was half original, but he was a black man. Right. Right. He had to be half original because he had to look something like them devils when he went in among them, so they wouldn't recognize him and kill him. How are you going to send a black prophet in there among all these Caucasian white devils, as wild as they were? Right. Had to send a half original man in, with grow a beard all over him, come in looking all raggedy, down on his all fours, act like he's one of them. And get among them to raise them up. Just think of it. All the prophets was half original. Jesus was a half original man. Is that clear? You think about this now. Here come Matthew Rod Muhammad. Half original. Think over this. In order to get to us. But he said from here on out no white person is going to rule us never again. The black man's going to rule his own self forever and ever and ever. We're never going to, the black man's not going to allow no one to ever rule him again as long as the earth stands. Yes, sir. And he told me, he said, we don't have to worry about no one ever coming and taking over because he said there's no God wiser, wiser than Matthew Fraud Muhammad. That's why he says you will rule forever and ever and ever and ever because no God can ever come forth wiser than Matthew Fraud Muhammad. Right. So no one can come and take the throne from you because you've got the most wisest knowledge there is. Is that clear? Yes. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Yes. Go home and keep a prayer on your lips. Go home and pray. You better keep a prayer on your lips because D-E-A-T-H is at your doors and windows knocking to come in. Yes. This is the final judgment day. Mm-hmm. On the final judgment day, the Bible in Daniel said it's a time of trouble that never has been since the earth has stood like this kind of a day we're living in. It's trouble all over the earth. Every one of those people are killing each other and shooting each other and blowing each other up, right? Look how they just blew up some people in the mosque praying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's something to think about, isn't it? Tell about everywhere you look. When you get home tonight, turn on the news. Look how many of our black people right here. Family, whole families being burned up alive. Your children being burned up. Why? God is angry with you because you've turned down God and his messenger. For now for 64 years, you've turned him down. Now he's angry with you. He's getting ready to cast you into hell. He's going to make you wish you had never been born. He's going to put so much misery upon you. Wish you'd never been born. He gets what he goes after. So what I'm saying, why not, if you have to submit willing, you might as well submit, submit willingly. He says either submit willingly or unwillingly. It makes no difference to him. Every knee shall bow, it says. And every tongue will confess on the judgment day. Who the God is. There he is. Allah and the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And you're going to find out very soon now every person on earth. Every knee will have to bow. And every tongue will have to confess that that is the God Almighty. And look at you and I. He come to you and I first. 
before any of the rest of the world knows who he is, he come after you and I, his own, his chosen people first. And he wants to show you off before the whole world, this is who I chose. These are my family. These are the rightful rulers of the planet Earth. These are the ones that I'm going to teach my secrets to. You, you'll never rule them again. They will be rich. They will be beautiful, the most beautiful people on the earth. They will be the richest people on the earth. Why? Because our father is the one that created the universe. Why should we be in, in want and in need when it's our father that created everything? Is that clear? The Bible tells you, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. That means the black man. It all belongs to the black man. All the diamonds, the gold and the ruby. Oil, it all belongs to the original black man. But this little newcomer to earth, this little transistor, this little blue-eyed Caucasian devil, and I hope he's listening. He thinks the earth belongs to him. But he will soon come to know Allah's getting ready to take it off of him. Every bit of it. And make him bow down and kiss the dust off your shoes. That's right, kiss the dust off your shoes. I thank you for coming and listening. If you'd like to reclaim your own, you can't join, you have to reclaim your own. As I said, you was born a Muslim but didn't know it. Here's a little card. Ask the secretary. Ask him for one of these little cards. Put your name on Look what it says. I have heard the divine teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad by one of his ministers, and I desire to reclaim my own and learn more of his teachings. The true followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad dedicated to uplift his great name and help me turn the fallen black man and woman of America to their own. That's some task, isn't it? Help return the fallen black man and woman to their own. Tear off that little part right there where the beautiful sun, moon, and stars, the divine emblem. Tear that part off and put it in your pocketbook or your purse. Get rid of them old crosses. If you got a cross around your neck, get that cross. That's a sign of death, emblem of death. Get that old cross around your neck. Right. If you can't run crosses in your car and anything, that's a sign of death. Why do you want a, a sign of death in your car? You understand? Sign of death up in your home. Here you got a picture of a man nailed to the cross, feet and hands nailed to the cross, head down, naked, and de- dead. What kind of, that's an ugly sign. Elijah Muhammad, that's the most ugly sign anybody can ever use. A dead man nailed to a cross. And, oh, that's my Savior there. How are you going to save you? you couldn't save yourself? Nailed to the cross. Is that clear? Yes. He said, what, what that really represents, that's the black man. He's a black man and woman. You've got your hands and feet nailed to the cross of Christianity. But God came and took you down off the cross and brought you back to life again. You went to heaven. That's a parable. Is that clear? Yes, so right now you've got your feet and hands nailed to the cross and God has come to take you down. And give your life back to you again. Is that clear? So thank you. Before we dismiss now, we do have to pay the rent on this building. We don't own it. It's decent. They allowed us to use it for our service. So when they come through with the basket, everybody reached in. Dig in deep and put some charity in the baskets. Help our lost cause. We maintain this building here just for you. We can meet anywhere. We can meet in our homes. We can meet anywhere, but we maintain this just for our poor, lost, and found brothers and sisters in the street. So help us defray the cost. Help us to pay the light bill. Help us to pay the rent. This way, when you come in, if you ain't got no money, you can still come. If you don't have no money, you can't put nothing in the basket. Right? right? But if our Lord has blessed you to have something, then, then help the cost. You accept our law pretty soon. If you don't have nothing, pretty soon you will have something when you're serving the right God. Our law has promised us heaven while we live, and he always keeps his promise. Thank you, sir. I want you to remember now, Islam means peace. You should always be trying to maintain peace at all times, in your homes and wherever you are, wherever you go. Always try to maintain peace at all times. Islam is not a religion per se. Islam is a way of life. It's a peaceful, scientific way of life. Is that clear? Not a religion per se. 
It's just given to you as a religion because our people are so religiously inclined, you know. But Islam is really is a way of life. It's not something you just do just one or two days a week. It's constantly just live this way. A way of life. Peaceful way of life. What is God's religion? Peace. That's his very nature. Mathematics is his religion. He built the universe with mathematics. He maintains with mathematics. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. What kind of numerals are those? Arabic numerals, aren't they? You can't build nothing without those Arabic numerals. Once the Romans tried it, we're not going to deal with them. We're going to get rid of more Arabs and more Arabic numerals. They tried it, but boy, they couldn't. When they got off, off in them high numbers and high mathematics, then Roman numerals, it drove them crazy. They had to come back and get their Arabic numerals, didn't they? Only way you can say there's one God, you have to use the Arabic numeral one. Right. White, right? right? Right. Now I'm about ten of these numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And everything is built from that. All you do is use those same numbers over and over again. Now I'm about ten numbers in a mathematical language. Now I'm about ten numbers. Right? right? So you just repeat using them same numbers over and over and over again. The alphabet, the Arabic alphabet. That's the original alphabet. The original language come from the Arabic. It all comes from the Arabic. Even the Bible tells you when God comes, where is he coming from in, on the judgment day? From the east. The Son of Man is coming out of the east and coming into the west in the last days to save his people. Right. That's a key right there, isn't it? It's a clue. Yes. If he's coming out of the east and going to the west, what's in the west so important? Why didn't he stay in the east? Yes. That means his people was not in the east. Right. His people are in the west, lost. So he leaves the east and comes into the west to save his people. Why didn't he go to the north or the south? Because his people is in the western part, of, in the hills of North America, in the woods of North America. That's why the Son of Man leaves the east and comes into the west in the last days. And he's not to come now, he's already here. I thank you. And we have a few announcements to be made. First of all, I want to remind all the believers when he dismissed now, we'd like for you to give about five or ten minutes for the sisters to make up their, the, the, in the kitchen department where, where they're preparing the food for you. Allow them about five minutes to get everything set up. And don't just rush right out into the lobby. And also we want to give them a chance over there in the lobby to get the tapes and the books and everything all set up for you. So just remain in, in the main auditorium for about five minutes when we first dismiss intermingling. You can talk with each other, which is very good. Have a little fellowship with one another. Greet one another. Then after about five minutes, then you can go out and purchase your books or, or go into the kitchen area and get your food. They have some delicious food prepared for you. And we'll have some announcement by the announcer, Brother Daniel. I don't know what, how well he feels today because he saw that man, that, that, that young boy that they killed, Saw him with his brains blow it out and his eyes open and all that. He went through a pretty good, terrible experience yesterday. Merciful, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, and in the name of the last and greatest messenger, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I greet you once again. Assalamu alaikum. Those who ordered copies of the Savior's Day celebration, they hit, pick up their copies of both of the two day celebrations. That is Savior's Day, Saturday, February 26th, and Sunday, February 27th, in the main lobby after the meeting. Anyone desiring to have a copy of the day's lecture, they place their orders for such an amount of Excuse me, the main lobby after the meeting. We got books of the messenger, how to eat to live, books one and two. Our savior has a wife, message to the black men in America, and fall of America. We also have the calendars right here. The sun will start on them right here. They don't sell for 95. The Muslim sisters invite all the nine dinners afternoon that's coming for life refreshments. 
For dinner, they have baked whitey, fish fillets with broccoli and cheese and rice or gratin, green beans, sweetened carrots, and wheat roll. For sandwiches, they have fish sticks and wheat slices with lettuce, tomatoes, and cheese. They have Asiatic bean soup with wheat bread, homemade muffins, a salad bar for good assortment of fresh produce to make a salad of your choice, also stuffed eggs, a wide variety of homemade cakes and pastries for you to select a dessert, coffee, tea, and milk are complimentary, and musical drinks are also available for a small donation. Thank you for your patronage, and all proceeds go to the Building Maintenance Fund. Awesome like Thank you for the announcements, Brother Daniel. And I want you to think about what happened with us here at Savior's Day. While they was paying $10 to get into the meeting in Chicago for Savior's Day and then taking up a collection after they got inside, everyone that was invited, no matter who came, the meeting was free and they were given free bean soup and free wheat bread. Everyone that came, free. That's the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They're clear. In fact, one of these days when our law delivers you, in other words, you, money won't be something that you need no way. You understand? Yes. You're owners of the earth. Everything that you need, you don't have to pay no money. And in and, and, and that kind of a civilization, they say money won't be something that, that, that you have to deal with. I understand that you will work a certain amount of days out of, out of every month. Then the rest of the month, in other words, every, everything is free. Socialistic type of a government, everything is free. You won't know, be paying no rent, you won't be paying no light bills and gas bills and water bills. You won't be paying for no kind of a transportation. Then after, after you uh, have worked a certain amount, done your little tour of duty, then you can travel. Go all around. Everything is free to worry about, no money, never. Then the next one, then the next crew, their time to come in and they work. You understand? Isn't, isn't, that, a, isn't that a beautiful society? Everybody go and do this. devil has come and made money. Money is the god of this evil world, isn't it? You don't have no money. You don't have no god. In fact, he puts on his money. In God we trust. Right? That's the dollar bills. You come without no dollar bills, no money, no silver, no gold in the world, but then you can't make it. In his world, he has all of it hoarded, hasn't he? In fact, he makes it. He makes the money. No wonder he always has money. He makes it there. He don't allow you to go make none. If you make it, that's counterfeit. Right. Whenever he runs out of money, all he has to do is call Harry, make us another batch. They make him another batch. Right. So he always has money, but you don't have nobody to call to make you a batch, do you? And you can't get none of his batches. Right. So we need a God to come and save us, don't we? Let us rise and pray. With your head slightly bowed and your hands up above your waistline. Don't hesitate to pray because this is the first time you ever prayed to the, to, the, to the God of our fathers, to the real true and living God. Right. You've been praying to a spook and a spirit in the past. Yes. Our Lord, guide us among those whom thou hast guided to right. And preserve us among those whom thou hast preserved. And befriend us among those whom thou hast befriended. And bless us in whatever thou dost grant us. And deliver us from the evils of what thou hast judged. For surely thou judges, and none can judge against that which thou hast judged. And he whom thou befriends most surely is not disgraced. I bear witness that nothing or no one deserves to be served or worshipped besides thee, O Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And I bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is thy true servant and last apostle. Amen. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the Lord of all the worlds, and in the name of his last and greatest message, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who teaches us when you leave here, don't do nothing to no one that you would not want done to yourself. And sit around for a few minutes and socialize with one another here. If, in case someone is here, if you're hungry and don't have no money, just let one of the ushers know. If you're hungry and don't have no money, we'll, we'll see that you have something to eat. If you have a little money, then put forth a little donation toward it. But if you, in case you don't, I don't want no one to feel as though now I'm hungry and I don't have no money. No, you still can eat. Is that clear? Assalamu alaikum.